Welcome to Hot Seat MD, a case conference review. The directions are simple. When the case appears, I will ask you to pause your media player. Then describe the study type and findings, give a brief differential diagnosis, and then check out the fast facts for additional information. Now pause your media player. Two radiographs demonstrate a fractured dislocation in the metatarsal phalangeal joint region with medial displacement of the first metatarsal bone and lateral displacement of the second through fifth metatarsal bones. The diagnosis here is Lisfranc fracture dislocation, the divergent type. No real other differential considerations should be included. Now pause your media player. Knee radiographs reveal multiple discrete ovoid radio densities in the bone. The differential diagnosis should include osteopoikilosis, and the appearance here is fairly specific for this entity. If there are only a few sclerotic densities present, other considerations should include multiple bone islands and sclerotic metastases. Now pause your media player. Sagittal knee MR image demonstrates a horizontal linear focus of increased signal in the posterior horn of the medial meniscus. The diagnosis should include horizontal meniscal tear. Mixoid degeneration of the meniscus could also be mentioned, although this is clearly a tear here as it extends to the edge of the meniscus. Now pause your media player. This oblique coronal T2 MR image reveals a large gap in the rotator cuff as well as superior subluxation of the humerus relative to the glenoid. The diagnosis here is full thickness supra and infraspinatus tears with tendon retraction. There really is no differential here. Now pause your media player. This sagittal T2 weighted MR image of the knee reveals increased signal in the ACL and likely a full thickness gap. The diagnosis here is ACL tear. Mucoid degeneration of the ACL could also be mentioned, but the tendon is clearly disrupted in its proximal to mid portion on this image. Now pause your media player. Now pause your media player. The radiograph of the shoulder demonstrates vague lucency in the scapular neck. The corresponding MR image reveals a destructive enhancing mass with extension through bone and into the surrounding soft tissues. The differential diagnosis should include a primary malignant tumor, such as chondrosarcoma in older patients, osteosarcoma in patients between the ages of 11 and 30, and malignant fibrous histiocytoma in patients of any age. Metastatic disease and multiple myeloma should generally also be included. Now pause your media player. T1 and T2 weighted sagittal MR images of the spine demonstrate compression of the superior end plate of L1, as well as decreased T1 and T2 signal in L1. 
There are also rounded masses with similar signal characteristics in T12, L2, and S1. The differential diagnosis should include vertebral metastases, likely osteoblastic or mixed sclerotic and lytic. This is supported by the fact that there are multiple lesions and that they are decreased in T1 and T2 signal, as well as the fact that there is a compression fracture present. A secondary consideration could include bone islands, although this should not cause compression fracture. Now pause your media player. This oblique coronal T2-weighted MR image of the shoulder demonstrates vertical high signal in the labrum superiorly. The differential diagnosis includes a slap tear of the labrum. Sublabral foramen could also be mentioned, although the very superior location and the linear, slightly ill-defined appearance argues against this. Now pause your media player. This axial T2-weighted MR image reveals fluid distending the prepatellar bursa. The differential diagnosis should include prepatellar bursitis, as well as potentially hematoma, although an appropriate history would be necessary, and with hematoma you would often see an associated bony injury. Now pause your media player. This axial image from a fluid-sensitive MRI sequence demonstrates edema involving the hamstring. The differential diagnosis includes a grade 1 hamstring injury. Soft tissue mass could also be included, although this edema is in the muscle itself and there is no obvious distortion or replacement of muscle fibers. Now pause your media player. Now pause your media player. Coronal and axial T2-weighted images of the knee reveal mild fluid signal adjacent to the MCL with a small amount of increased signal in the MCL itself. The differential diagnosis should include an MCL grade one to two tear, tibial collateral ligament bursitis, or hyperemia from an associated meniscal tear. Now pause your media player. Now pause your media player. Images from a T2-weighted shoulder MRI reveal a complex cystic lesion or multiple small cysts in the spinal glenoid notch of the scapula. The differential diagnosis includes spinal glenoid notch ganglion, and there really is no other differential consideration here.